What's up guys? Welcome back to weartesters.com official YouTube channel. My name is Evan and today we're going to go over Penny Hardaway's sneaker history. You'll find links in the description box below to all the sneakers we mentioned today as well as to the full article on weartesters.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram you can do so at sugar underscore trace. And with all that being said... Okay, so Penny Hardaway played his college ball at Memphis. He was a 6'7", 195 pound combo guard and could do everything on the court. He had great handles, he could shoot, and he was a really good passer as well. He quickly became one of the top prospects in the country, and he would play two years at Memphis before declaring for the 1993 NBA draft. He would end up averaging just about 20 points, eight rebounds, and five assists. Penny wore Converse in college, primarily the Converse Accelerate RS1 High Cut. The RS1 High Cut was a pretty cool shoe because it featured a liquid cushioning system instead of air or a dual density foam, for example. Converse called the cushioning React, but not the React you're thinking of. It was actually called React Juice, and you have to think of it as like a waterbed. So the idea was when you put pressure on one side of the shoe, the liquid in the cushioning system would flow back to the other side of the shoe, giving you a very fluid ride on court. She got new shoes from Converse with the React Juice. Penny moves this way, Juice reacts that way. Makes us stop and cut quicker than us. As I mentioned before, Penny would end up declaring for the 1993 NBA draft, and he would go third overall to the Golden State Warriors, drafted after Sean Bradley. But why? Penny ended up in Orlando because there was a huge trade on draft night. Orlando sent their number one pick, Chris Webber, to the Golden State Warriors and got Penny in return. So Penny would end up having a really good first year. He would end up with averages of 16 points per game, five rebounds and six assists with 2.3 steals. On top of that, Michael Jordan had just retired to go play baseball, so the East was wide open and Orlando with Penny and Shaq seemed poised to take that number one spot. During his rookie year, Penny also signed a sneaker deal with Nike. Penny wore several different Nike models that year. He wore the Nike Air Swift, which was also a favorite of Scottie Pippen. By the way, we have a video on Scottie Pippen's sneaker history if you want to check that out. And the Nike Air Prevail, which Gary Payton and Reggie Miller both wore that season as well. But Penny also wore Jordan 9s that season. You probably already know this, but MJ never wore the Jordan 9s on court as a Chicago Bull. He would eventually play in 9s, but during his time as a Wizard. Penny got PE versions of the Jordan 9, and they came in Orlando Magic colorways and featured his number one on the heel. Penny's second year started off really well. During that offseason, he had a starring role in the classic hoops film Blue Chips. He acted alongside his teammate Shaquille O'Neal and the great Nick Nolte. Fun fact, Penny actually wore Reeboks during the shooting of Blue Chips, specifically the Reebok Pump Vertical. So that was one of the few times you saw Penny playing anything other than Nike. So going into his second season, he was already kind of a household name. On top of that, he boosted his numbers to 21 points a game, four rebounds and seven assists. He was named to the All-Star team and the Orlando Magic would make the NBA Finals. During that second season, Penny would wear the Nike Air Lambast and the Nike Air Up, as well as his first non-official signature, the Nike Air Flight 1. The Nike Air Flight 1 has a pretty cool history of its own. So towards the end of the 94-95 season, Michael Jordan made his return to professional basketball. He did so wearing number 45 and playing in Jordan 10s. They ended up making the playoffs as the fifth seed in the East. And during their first round matchup with the Charlotte Hornets, Michael continued to wear number 45 and play in Jordan 10. So for the second round of the playoffs, the Bulls would meet Penny Hardaway and the Orlando Magic. Michael chose that second round of the playoffs to debut his next signature shoe early. That shoe was the Jordan 11 and the colorway was the Concord colorway. A cool fact about the Jordan 11 is that it was the first performance basketball shoe to feature patent leather. The Chicago Bulls actually lost that first game against the Orlando Magic, and Michael was still wearing number 45. This prompted Penny's teammate Nick Anderson to comment that 45 ain't 23. Oh, as you can imagine, that didn't sit too well with Michael. So for that second game, Michael switched his jersey number from 45 back to 23. Oh, Nick Anderson said number 45 is not like number 23. And you know, it made all this. Well, he said this and here come MJ the next game with number 23 on. Talk about big news, check this number. Gone is 45, back from the Raptors is 23. Now the Jordan 11 Concords didn't follow the NBA's uniformity rule. Now Michael needed a black colorway of the shoe, but since he debuted them early, there wasn't a black colorway available for him to wear. So his solution was to ask Nike for a black pair of the Nike Air Flight 1's Penny's pseudo signature shoe. The pair Michael played in were practically identical to the ones Penny played in, but his were suspiciously missing the heel tab, which featured Penny's logo on it. 
Michael dropped 40 in the game, but the Bulls ultimately lost. This was the only time Michael wore a signature shoe other than his own. The Orlando Magic would end up winning their matchup against the Chicago Bulls and move on to play the NBA Finals against the Houston Rockets. But they would end up losing in four games. During the 95-96 season, Penny had his best statistical year. He was named to the All-Star team and to the All-NBA first team. But unfortunately, the Bulls had beast mode Michael Jordan back, and it seemed like the Magic's window to take the East was closed. As a silver lining though, Penny got his first signature shoe. The Nike Air Penny 1 was designed by Eric Avar, the same mind behind the Kobe signature line. The shoe featured four foot zoom air and a 180 airbag in the heel. The shoe has great traction and it's very supportive and it's really well designed for large mobile guards. The Nike Air Penny one also introduced us to Little Penny. Little Penny was Penny Hardaway's smaller alter ego voiced by Chris Rock and they're some of the most memorable sneaker commercials. Hey Penny, what do they call these shoes anyway? Air Penny. The Air Penny 1 is actually one of Chris's favorite shoes and he's gonna tell us all about it. The Nike Air Penny 1 is one of my favorite shoes of all time. However, I could say that about any shoe. I mean. The Penny 2s are one of my favorite of all time. The Penny 4 is also a favorite of mine. Well, actually, and the 3s. But we're here to talk about the Penny 1s real quick. And I just think that they're a fantastic model. I think they look great. My first colorway of them was actually a non-Orlando colorway. I didn't get the shoe until the first retros of them back in 2005, 2006. And it was the Chicago style colorway, which was an original style color blocking, but they replaced all of the royal blue with Chicago's red. And I just think that they looked fantastic. We actually did a whole tribute, just like I did with the Air Jordan series. I did a whole tribute to the penny line which i called the air penny project so i performance reviewed and tested every one of them they're fantastic i guarantee it the magic made the playoffs that year but they weren't able to get back to the final during the off season penny would play for dream team 2 in the 1996 summer olympics in atlanta penny would bring home a gold medal but unfortunately Shaq left the magic and signed with the la lakers virtually ending the team's chances at a title. During that 96-97 season, Penny Hardaway was the only superstar on the Orlando Magic. The increased playing time and responsibility started to wear on him physically, and the injuries started piling up, and he would only end up playing 59 games of that season. Penny also got his second signature shoe, the Nike Air Penny 2. The Nike Air Penny 2 is a great encore performer, and its main feature is the cushion. The shoe features four foot zoom air and a 180 airbag in the heel, all encased in a light foam carrier. But that season, Penny also wore the Foam Posit 1s. The Foam Posit 1s were another non-signature signature in the Penny line. And Penny wasn't even the first player to wear them. That was actually Mike Bibby, who at the time was in college playing for the Arizona Wildcats. Bibby debuted the shoe in March of 1997 during the Wildcats' famous run to the NCAA championship. Ten days later, ads appeared in local papers in Indianapolis where the championship game would be held, and people were stunned at the $180 price tag of the shoe. That was a crazy amount of money for a basketball shoe back in 1997. Are you talking kidding me right now? Another fun fact about the Foam Posit 1 is that it was actually intended for Scottie Pippen. Pippen apparently didn't like the design of the Foam Posit 1, and during a meeting with Eric Avar as they were designing the Penny 3, the Foam Posit 1 caught Penny's eye, and he insisted that that be his next signature shoe. Penny debuted the Foam Posit 1s in the NBA with only two games left in the regular season. Penny continued wearing the Foam Posit 1s during the playoffs, but was forced to paint in black lines with a Sharpie to conform to the NBA's uniformity rule. This would later result in a colorway of the Foam Posits known as the Sharpie colorway. During the 97-98 season, unfortunately, Penny only played 19 games due to a torn meniscus. And Penny was never really able to get back to his superstar status after that. But we did get the Air Penny 3, which is a great encore performer. The shoe features the usual Penny cushion setup, great traction, and great support features as well. The 98-99 season would be Penny's last with the Orlando Magic, and it would be the last year he would get a signature shoe as an active NBA player. The Air Penny 4 was an okay performance basketball shoe. It had good support features, but the traction was too spotty to call it a great encore performer. At the end of the season, Penny was traded to the Phoenix Suns. He was able to play eight more years in the NBA, but he was never able to recapture the magic from his early years. During those last eight seasons, Penny would play for the Phoenix Suns, the Miami Heat, and the New York Knicks. During those years, Penny played in a lot of different Nike models, probably too many to mention in this video, but two of my favorite are the Nike Hirachi 2K4s and the Nike Zoom Flight 2K4s. K3. Penny officially retired in 2008, and he would still get two more signature shoes from Nike, the Nike Air Penny 5s and the Nike Air Penny 6s. Both were released as lifestyle models, but they're still playable on court. In particular, the Air Penny 5 is a great encore performer. The shoe features Hall of Fame level traction, and we've seen players like Rajon Rondo wearing them as recently as 2020 on court. This is another one of Chris's favorite Penny shoes, so I'll let him break it down for you. Yes, the Air Penny 5s are fantastic. These are the one colorway that I still have of them. I think it's the only colorway besides the black and Orlandos that are worth having personally, although the Miami Dolphin one is super clean, I will say. This is a 
Sports were released, so it was not intended for performance, but they did put performance features in there so you can actually play in them. This to me was a, a great outsole. It just not only looks great, but it actually performed really well. I used these in my league games alongside the Air Jordan 28 at the time, and the floor was so bad that the only two shoes that would stick to them were these and the 28s. These were different as far as cushion setups though. They did have the Air Max unit in the heel like the traditional penny line did, but there was no zoom air in the forefoot because, you know, Nike and their budgets. However, whatever foam they did use uh, was actually really comfortable. I remember at the time when they originally released thinking it might have been Cushlon. I still have never gotten any confirmation of that, but there is no actual cushion in the forefoot. However, it's a great looking shoe. I think that it fits right in line with the lineage and all of that stuff if we're looking at the design aesthetic. They did a great job. This, this is just a fantastic shoe. And can we just say real quick that Penny Hardaway has the best logo of all time. Tell me a better one. There's actually a lot. T-Max logo is great. The Jumpman obviously is great. The Jordan Wings logo is great. But look at this one cent, man. It's his number and it's a penny. It's so cool. I like it a lot. Nike released one other penny-related shoe after he retired. The Nike Air Zoom Rookie was a mashup of the Nike Air Flight 1s, the Foam Possum 1s, and the Nike Air LWPs. It was an okay looking shoe, but it wasn't a great encore performer. Remember I mentioned Penny Hardaway's alter ego Lil Penny? Well, he got two signature shoes as well. And he's probably one of the few non-humans to ever get a signature shoe. Make some noise. Woo! Make some noise, Kobe. Come on, number 24. Woo! Beef and broccoli. The Nike Air Half Cent was a remix of all of the Penny shoes except the Penny 4 with a dash of Foam Posit 1 in them. The Lil Penny Posit, on the other hand, was a mashup of the Air Go LWP and the Nike Air Way Up. The shoe featured a hyperposite upper similar to the one on the LeBron 11, which is a contemporary to the low penny pose. It's too bad Penny's career wasn't able to reach its full potential due to injury, but at least he gave us one of the most legendary sneaker lines of all time. By the way, Nike reportedly will be dropping a Nike Air Penny 1 Retro in 2022, so keep an eye out for that. That pretty much does it for Penny Hardaway's sneaker history. Let us know in the comments below whose sneaker history you want to see next. And until next time, guys, be good.